Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Assistant Secretary General of the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, uh, Your Excellency, Assistant Secretary General of ASEAN Region, um, our, my colleague and director of the office of uh, Jakarta and Southeast Asia Region, Mr. Chavez, and my friend, uh, Mr. Li Xinghua, uh, chairman of the Memory of the World MOCAP uh, for the Southeast Asia Region. As UNESCO, we always think of our mandate as building peace. But building peace is an important issue derived from our mandate linked to communication, culture, and education. Our constitution says, a very interesting phrase, says we should build peace by facilitating the free flow of ideas and knowledge between peoples of the world. I think it's a beautiful phrase because it is the knowledge of shared between peoples of the world that will be build the understanding and the dialogue that the world needs for building peace. And that understanding of all societies means that we understand the culture, the history, the traditions and the values of every society. And this is why we give so much importance to heritage. Heritage is our culture, is the legacy we have left, but it's also the culture and the values that accompany us. It is interesting, we always say that heritage is like the shadow of someone walking against the sun. Because although it is behind us, at the same time, it is always with us. No matter where we go, it follows us. So this history of ours, this legacy of ours, will always be important with everything that it has to contribute, with all the values and the traditions and even our mistakes of the past. And this is crucial to understand the present and to be able to look to the future. This is why we have given tremendous importance to heritage programs in UNESCO as part of our cultural identity. And we have the physical heritage programs, the Heritage of the World, which is the one that most people know because of the cities, the buildings, the temples, uh, the, the old traditions. We have the intangible heritage, which is specifically the tradition of peoples. We, love, we, we began this event with these lovely dances uh, from this, this, this choreo uh, choreographic group from, from Malaysia. But at the same time, we're looking at our heritage from a documentary perspective in, in the Memory of the World program which is essentially the memory of the world pro is the heritage that has a specific message. Whether it's carved on stone, on wood, written on paper, on papyrus, on, on bamboo, or carved on, 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 on a building, or later printed in, in a press, uh, or eventually digitalized like today. But this is precisely, or in audiovisual form, in images and sound. So this is the legacy that accompanies us and that we're also leaving for the next generations, which is what memory of the world pretends to, to, to build. The knowledge of this, of this legacy, the transfer of this knowledge uh, to all humanity. It doesn't mean that we necessarily agree with everything that has happened. There are tragic elements in our history, but they were still very fundamental to understand our history. And therefore, many of these events are established in documents that we have to keep in archives and we have to systematize. Of course, we have to make a set. There's so much out there in documentary heritage that we have to systematize and to select what is the most important process that we can actually work on them and interpret these documents and use them for the benefit of understanding the content for the future generations. This is what we're pretending to do. So I'm very pleased to be here in this consultation on the recommendation of the preservation of documentary heritage, including audiovisual material, because this recommendation is precisely an effort 
to point to all states, all member states of UNESCO, but in reality to the whole world, of how important it is to engage in specific activities to preserve this material. And I must say that this is the first consultation that we're organizing to implement this recommendation. We have several others planned ahead. So today in Malaysia and in this Southeast region, we're opening a new era in the memory of the world program. This is very important. And this, I congratulate all the local memory of the world committees that are here present and those that will be formed. I think that we'll, I'm, we're expecting to see them pretty soon. We hope this consultation will bring a specific recommendations and very concrete issues to the issue of preservation. Because the preservation, again, is not only an effort to keep old documents or materials together, or old video reels or sound elements together. The preservation is to keep the message alive in its original form, but in a digitalized form as well, so it can be reached to the world, it can be give access to the world. I always say that memory of the world, we talk about two goals, I always say well, really we have three. The first goal is to understand the importance of, of the heritage, the value of these elements, and to preserve it. The second one is to make it accessible to the world through the di digitalization and through all publications. And the third, which is the one that we normally do, is to make it educational material for the younger generations that are coming behind us. So from the early ages, children, little girls and boys can learn about this legacy that has been left to the world by past generations. And finally, let me say that this is the identity of every nation. And every nation has an initial responsibility to protect their legacy. But at the same time, the culture of the world belongs to the whole world. This is why the name, Memory of the World. Because we are in a multicultural world, which is another recognition that UNESCO makes. The dimension of multiculturality is very important, and cultural diversity. And to accept that and recognize the value of diversity is part of building peace in the world. So we're also sharing this legacy as a legacy that belongs to all. Yes, it is primarily an effort of every nation, but we must always remember that the content, the substance of this legacy, of this memory, belongs to everyone, everyone in the world. So it's a common value to which we should all have access, which is the main purpose of this, is how to give universal access to all this legacy. Finally, let me say that for me, one of the biggest pleasures of being in memory of the world meetings is that there's so much knowledge gathered with people like yourselves, women and men, who are such important academics in issues of archive, of documentation, of pr uh, preservation, or of history, that I feel humbled to be in a group as the, as, as the di uh, dimension that you have. And I think this wealth and this strength that you all have has to be felt by the world. So it's very important that recommendations that we do in these consultations actually reach the world because it's coming from minds like yourselves. We are putting as UNESCO our hope in this and expectations in the work that will be done in this consultation and the following ones. And I certainly congratulate that we're all of you to begin this recommendation on the preservation of documentary heritage, including audiovisual materials, in the Southeast region, it means a lot about the determination and the will that all of you have to do the work of preservation and sharing this preservation with the world. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opening.